in your rules, obviously the, the, the first the first rule is to stand up straight with your shoulders back, right? Well, when you get, for lack of a better word, indoctrinated, in fact, there is no better word, when you get indoctrinated into the military, that's exactly what's happening, and guess what? You get taught, one of the first things that you get taught is how to stand, how to stand properly, and you know what they tell you? Chin up, chest out, shoulders back. They make you stand like that. There's no coincidence to that, is there? Not at all, not at all. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, you could say it's a dominant stance, but I, that's not the right way of thinking about it. Although it is a dominant stance, the reason to adopt it is not because it's a dominant stance. It's a competent stance. And competence tends to make you dominant, at least in, in hierarchies that are functioning properly. Because you want, there are hierarchies, which is what I outline in chapter one. I say the hierarchies are old. They're not socio-cultural constructions. They're not a secondary consequence of capitalism and the free market. All of that is absolute nonsense. It, it couldn't be more wrong. And as an indication of that, I point out that lobsters, whom we diverged from on the evolutionary front a third of a billion years ago, have hierarchies, right? And that the neurochemical systems, the neural, neurological systems that lobsters have run on, that mediate their hierarchical status, run on the same chemical that the neurological systems that we use to mediate hierarchy run on. So that's just absolutely mind-boggling. But a lobster, like a victorious lobster, stretches out right. and adopts a more dominant pose because his serotonin levels go up as he becomes more and more victorious, and that governs posture. Well, and so to stand up straight with your shoulders back is to open yourself up to the world. You're not in, a def you're not in the defensive crouch of a prey animal technically speaking. And that is the circuitry that's governing posture. It's prey versus predator, something like that. And, and it, to stand up like that is to expose your, yourself to the world, but in a bring it on sort of manner, not, not precisely combative, but let's say courageous. And your posture announces that. And it doesn't just announce that to other people. It announces that to yourself. And it can start it can be one of those things that can start a virtuous cycle occurring, which is partly why it's taught in the military. You get these guys that come in, they're all slumped over, they don't know how to stand up, they're looking at their feet, their necks are bent, like, even if they're good-looking men, they don't look good because they're all crunched over. You see people like this on the street all the time, they could be perfectly attractive, except they're completely huddled in, you know, and they need to stand up and stretch themselves out, and then they can breathe too, and that's a competent stance. One of the things that the, the critics of the modern West don't understand about hierarchies is that, first of all, they're everywhere, they're, they're inevitable. If you're going to have a distinction of value between things, you have a hierarchy. And if you, you don't want to get rid of the distinction of values between things because then you don't have anything to do. That's foolish. It's, you, you can't live that way. So I say, well, the hierarchies are based on power. It's like, no, they're not. They're based on competence. And there isn't anything more powerful than competence, but power isn't tyranny, it's not brutality, it's not threat. It might be the hint of all those things, you know, because I don't think you can be fully competent without being able to hint at those things. But hierarchies in the West are fundamentally based on competence. It doesn't mean they're not flawed, because we miss the mark lots, and there's lots of reasons why perfectly competent people don't attain the position that they deserve and that they should have for their benefit and everyone else's. The, the hierarchies are tainted by corruption, but fundamentally, they're fundamentally they're based on competence. So. And and that's so so with that, this first rule that you put in the book, and you're saying that's a cycle that can go backwards. So you don't have to have like the serotonin first, and then you stand up. If you stand up straight, yeah. you'll somehow increase your serotonin yeah, over yeah, time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, and you, you can signal actually, to yourself. Didn't you say you could inject lobsters with serotonin and they start to stand straighter? <laughs> Yeah, you can or basically stand, give them but. antidepressants. So like if a lobster gets defeated in a fight, then he's statistically more likely to lose the next fight than you would guess from a tally of his previous victories. So that's the first thing. If you lose, you increase your risk of further loss. But if you win, you increase your risk of future gains. That's, that's a very important principle. It's a crucially important principle. It governs life. But yeah, if you take a lobster and he gets all defeated, and he's off pouting and won't fight anymore because he's you know having a bad day, and you inject him with serotonin, essentially give him antidepressants, it's the same thing, then he'll straighten up and he'll go out and have another scrap. It's like, and I read that, 
oh, I don't know, it's probably at least 10 years ago when I was reading about, well, the, the neurophysiology of these neurochemical systems. That's why I got onto it. It just it was another thing that just blew me away. I thought, really, you're kidding. That circuit is that old? It's like it's that old? Seri you know, that's way before there were trees, eh? Yeah. That's how long ago that is. And so hierarchy is a patriarchal construction. H how about no? <laughs> how about that's wrong? It's seriously wrong. So, so I had a, I was talking to one of my friends the other night. Uh, his name is Joe. He's got a kid that's wrestling. His kid is six years old, I think. Dom and he says, you know, he's getting put into the higher category He's kind of getting his butt whipped now, yep. and I'm really not sure. What do you think? And I said well You want him to win because when he wins it's more fun and we has more fun So now I have actual more evidence yeah, yeah. that you should get your kids in a position again I think your kids should get beat sometimes. Yeah, uh, but they should certainly not get beat down all the no, time no, Exactly. I did that to my kids when when my kids first started jujitsu. I, I put them. Oh, you're good You're gonna compete because I'm telling you to, yep. and then I'm gonna put you in a higher weight class with older kids, because that's gonna make you tougher. That was yep. my, yep. you know, stupid thinking. Yep. And now with my youngest daughter, I'm like, no, 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 you, you go out and you have fun. And you yep. go out and you compete against people that are somewhat equal to you, maybe a little bit below you, maybe a little higher, yeah, but depending you're gonna on win your mood sometimes. Even. Yeah, 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 well, absolutely. What, well, that's, I think we could, we could think about that also in terms of, of the conversation about meaning that we started to have. It's like, if you win all the time, that's meaningless because, well, and you think, why? Because you want to win. It's like, yeah, fair enough. So why would winning all the time become meaningless? It's because your theory of winning isn't sophisticated enough because here's how you win. You play the game to win, but while you're playing, you play in a way so that you get better at the game, right? Because you're going to play a bunch of games. Well, it's even more than that. You play the game to win, but you play it so that you get better at the game. Okay, fine, that makes sense. So you wanna push yourself, right? Because that's how you get better, and so you need competition to push yourself. So you need to have the risk of loss, because otherwise you won't do it. But here's an even better way of thinking about it. You play the game so that you don't only get better at that game, but you get better at the entire set of possible games. And that's what you do when you're a good sport. It's like, well, so how do you do that? Well, partly you, you find the proper level of competition, right? So you wanna be pushed, so that you will make the effort necessary to remove what's useless about yourself and to help foster the growth of what's useful. And if you do that, then you get the, the joy of participating in the game towards victory, but the extra joy of building yourself more and more strongly at the same time. And so when you tell your kid, doesn't matter whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Your kid says, what do you mean by that? And you say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I mean by that. Because the kid says, I'm supposed to win, aren't I? It's like, well, yeah. So why does it matter how I play the game? It's like, well, then you're stumped. Even though you're right, you just don't know why. Right. But the reason is, is you want to tell you, here's the reason. It's like, we can make this very simple. Life is not a game. It's a series of games. It's actually a series of diverse games. Okay, so who's the winner of the series of diverse games? Because that's the real question, right? Not who wins a game. It's like, whatever, you win a game. It's like, if I hold a gun to your head and we're playing chess, I can say lose. Yeah. It's like, I win. It's like, well, <laughs> that's not helpful, obviously. So you want to teach your kid, you want to help your kid learn to be the winner of the set of diverse games. Okay, so what does that winner look like? Well, here's the first clue. That's the person who keeps getting invited to play, you know, so because you win, if people invite you to play all the time, you have opportunities coming to you just nonstop. And maybe like, let's say you have 50 opportunities and each of them are potentially 50% for you and 50% for the other person. You think, well, that's a pretty good deal. And then you think, well, wait a minute, let's flip this around. So it's like 60% for the other person and 40% for me. I'm going to be like, I'm going to go, I'm going to overboard in the generosity. You think, well, then what happens? Well, then instead of having 20 opportunities at every moment, you have like 50 opportunities at every moment. And that's so, that's what you want for your kids is you want all the invisible doors around them to open. And you do that by saying, play nobly, right? Pay attention to your teammates, pass the damn puck so they get a chance, right? Even if you're the best player on the team, help the people on your team develop. Don't grandstand, right? Um, don't, if you have the opportunity to beat your opponent 20 to one, 
you know, in goals. It doesn't happen very often, but it can, especially when kids are playing. Right. It's like, well, maybe after you're up seven to one, it's like back off a bit. You don't have to humiliate your opponents. It's because it's, it's what would you say? It's uh, contemptible behavior on your part. And so, and you know that because you go and watch a hockey game or something like that, and you watch a kid that really knows how to play. It's like they're playing like mad to win. They're pushing themselves to be better, but they're paying attention to their damn teammates, and they're, they respect their opponents. And you think, well, that's, that's a hell of a kid there. It's like, yeah, that's exactly right. That, that kid's going somewhere. Do, do kids ever show they get so committed, let's say hockey, right? You get a kid that's just so committed to winning in hockey that he's going to lose at other games? Well, that's that's Other another problem. Other games in life, right? Well, that, that's another. That, well, that's another problem. Is like so you could be overboard. Yeah. Well. Well, the other thing too is that with sports, like you could say, well, most kids aren't going to be NHL level hockey players. Like that's impossible. Like maybe you should aim for that. I would say probably not because it's so damn unlikely. But whatever. Some kids are going to manage that, and and more power to them. You say, well, what are the sports for for the rest of? the kids and the answer to that is well obviously there's the physical discipline and the, and the health that goes along with that and the ability to engage in and tolerate competition and learn how to be a gracious winner and a gracious loser but a lot of it is character that all that's part of character building well, that's what you want is you say well why build your character it's like well how how about that's your set of toolkits for, for that's your set of tools for dealing with catastrophe how about that for a reason Right, so one of the things I've, I've suggested to my viewers, this is the men in particular, but not just the men, um, you should be the most reliable person at your father's funeral. That's a good goal, man. That's a good goal because everyone's broken in a situation like that. And you adding to that brokenness and misery, I mean, you're going to be grieving, like no doubt about it, and, and no kidding, but there's a time to step forward with some character, you know, and it's the same thing. You're going to be at someone's deathbed. You're going to be quibbling with your siblings while you're doing that, while your parents dying. It's like it's bad enough that they're dying. That's tragedy, right? But you can turn that into hell, no problem. You just get a bunch of people with no character around a deathbed, and it's like, well, it's bad enough, but that turns it into something like hell, and that happens in people's lives all the time. It's like character is everything. So, and that's why the wise people of our past tradition insisted upon that. They say, well, don't lie. Well, why not? Well, it destroys your character. Well, so what? Well, then you turn suffering into hell. Is that what you want? Maybe, you know, because people will want that. But I would say, walk away from people like that, right? That's not, unless that's what you want, then 